Hello to all your viewers of the Cross TV, that the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ may be with you. I am Pastor Dr. Richard Severberger from Brazil. I want to greet my host, my great friend and mighty man of God, Dr. Joseph Nassara. And today we are going to continue with the School of Ministry, and we're going to start a new school, the School of Evangelism. So today will be the first class, the first lesson of the School of Evangelism. Open your Bibles with me in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 41 and verse 42. Gospel of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 41, 42. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it, because they repented at the preaching of Jonas, and behold, a greater than Jonas is here. The queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it, for she came from the uttermost part of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. Jesus here comparing himself that he's greater than Jonas and that he's greater than Solomon. And he's comparing them because he's saying in the Old Testament, the people of Nineveh heard the message of evangelism of prophet Jonas, repented and were saved. And that in the Old Testament, that the people of Ethiopia with the king of Seba heard the message of the gospel to King Solomon, repented and accepted the gospel and were saved. And now Jesus is going to the cities of Israel preaching the gospel and he is a greater man than Jonas and he is a greater man than Solomon, but they don't accept the message of Jesus, don't accept the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and so they are not repented. So Jesus is comparing himself that he's a greater evangelist than Jonas and than Solomon because they were great evangelists in the Old Testament. So we can learn that in the Old Testament there are two methods of evangelism. The method that King Solomon applied and the method that Jonas applied. So let's first start with the method of King Solomon. And that's the most important method how in the Old Testament God have learned the people of Israel how to evangelize, how to win souls for Jesus. And it goes by this, it goes by the law of attraction, the law that you will attract the other person to come to you. Just like a magnet it pulls iron to himself, so we must pull the people to come to us. That the people will come to us and ask, what is the gospel to us? Come to us and ask, who is Jesus? Who is the God that we serve? How do we attract people to come to us? How do we pull them for, him, for them to hear the gospel? Now, that's very clear that God says in the Old Testament, I'm your God and I'm giving you my laws. One of the most important things in the Old Testament, when Prophet Moses comes, he gives the laws of God, starting with the Ten Commandments and then all the other laws that are written in the book of laws in the book of Moses. And God gives some promise with those laws. If you obey my laws, I shall bless you. Let's read it very clearly in Deuteronomy chapter 28. So in the fifth book of Moses, we have this, and, and God says this, in Deuteronomy chapter 28, the fifth book of Moses, there's written this, chapter 28, starting from verse 1, and it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all this, his commandments, which I command thee this day, that I, the Lord thy God, will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thy shall hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shall thee be in the city, and blessed shall thee be in the field. Now I will not continue reading all those verses, but if you keep on versing, reading all those verses, you will see that God will bless them if they obey the commandment of verse 14. God even said, I shall make thee the head and not the tail. Thy shall be above only, and thy shall not be beneath, if thou thy, if thy hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. God is saying very clearly, if you obey his commandments, you will bless, be blessed. How does this work? How do you receive blessing, prosperity, if you obey the commandments of God? It's very easy to explain, because the commandments of God, all of them 
are good. God is good. He doesn't make no commitment that's not effective. No commitment that is not successful. Those commitments are to protect us and to make us to be effective in this world. If you obey the commitments of God, everything that you touch with your hand in the natural world will be blessed and will get result, big result, and will multiply and will remain. So if you obey God's commandments in the natural world, you already will be blessed because every commandment of God has a purpose to bring blessing here upon earth, to make you successful. So the commandments of God, what Moses has given to us is a pathway to success in life. So you will be successful. Not only that, God says that if you obey the commandments, it will please God. God will be happy. God is the supernatural. Now, in the supernatural world, God will be pleased with you. And God, who controls the natural world, is above the natural world. He is the creator. He will make even supernatural blessings pour upon you in this, bless, in this, spirit, in this physical world. So not only the commandments of God make you successful here on earth, but there will be even a bigger increase and bigger blessing because God will bless you even supernatural in this physical world. So if you obey the commandments of God, you will be healthy, you will be strong, you will be wise, your work will give more labor and more result, you will be protected in the natural world, and you will produce more. So if you do the commandments of God, your family life will be a blessing, your business, your work will be a blessing. Everything what you do will be a blessing. And all the things that belong to you will not break down. They'll be protected by God. Your cars, your house, all your goods. And you will not be robbed because God will bless you. God will protect you. That's the blessing if we serve God. So if you are a faithful Christian who reads the Bible, pray to God, and you put to practice the commandments of God, you will be blessed. Now, what has this to do with evangelism, you can ask to me? That has to do with King Solomon. Because the only time in the whole kingdom of Israel that the majority of Israel, the people of God, served God was in the kingship of King David and in the kingship of King Solomon. That was the time that people served God. And when Solomon was king, he built the temple of the Lord. The people were dedicated to God. The people see God. And for the first time, these promises that we read in chapter 28 of Deuteronomy, that if you obey God's commandment, God's blessings will be poured upon you, happened in the nation of Israel. And Israel, we know that in the time of King Solomon, was the richest nation in the world. And Solomon was the richest king. And they were blessed. In the whole kingship of Solomon, there was not one war, not one conflict. So there was peace. There was prosperity, there was business, there was God blessing upon them, and they built the temple to the Lord because they brought all their tidings and offering to the house of God. And if you do that, God will open the storeways of the windows of heaven and the storehouses of God will pour their blessings upon you. So Israel was blessed, and all the kings of all the world wanted to know how can this be? How is Israel so prosperous? How is Israel so blessed? Why don't they have war? Why there is no conflict? And why does their businesses grow? So that's why all the leaders of the world, even from far away from Africa, from Ethiopia, King Sheba came to Israel to talk with Solomon to know the secret of his success. And we know that Solomon declared the secret of his success is to obey the commandments of God to bring your tidings and offering to the house of God, to live holy, to seek him, to worship him, to build a temple for him, and obeying his commandments. God will pour his blessings upon you. And then King Sheba heard it and said, that, all right, I will bring the gospel of God to Ethiopia. And we know that Ethiopia is a nation that served God. So even in Africa, far away. And that's the way how to evangelize by attracting people to come to you because you are obedient to the word of God. Now, my friends, I will give you a testimony of what happened in my life. I've told you all many times that I came from a very difficult family. My father was an alcoholist. My mother was from Brazil living in the Netherlands. She was a foreigner. So I, my family were foreigners. 
with a drunken father, and the problem above all this, we were only living for social wealth care, where much of money went to the alcohol addiction of my father, so we were poor, we were in very bad condition. So if you came to our house, we didn't have a lot of toys at the other kids. We didn't have so much food at the other houses. So when we were little kids, we always played in a house of somebody. And I always think it's better to play in the house of my friends because they have more toys and more food. But many times they came to my house and played in my house. There was less food, there was less toys, but there was something different. We served God. My mother served God. My father was an alcoholist, but my mother served God. And we prayed, and we put Christian music, and we didn't watch all the TV programs, and we didn't hear the music of the world. We may not curse. We had the Christian's law effective in our house. And so the other kids came play in our house, needed to obey to our Christian laws in our house. And so I was grown up. When I became later an adult and I became a preacher of the word of God, traveling the world, preaching the gospel, and I went as a missionary to Brazil, always go once a year, I go back to the Netherlands to visit family and to preach in the churches there. And when I was back in the Netherlands, I got this feeling that I wanted to visit my old neighborhood where I was grown up. When I was a little kid, I wanted to go to my old house. And I had this longing to eat the snack food when I was a little kid, the Dutch snack food. Who knows, a fricadeau and a pita pole and a coquette, things that you don't have nowhere in the world except in the Netherlands in the Dutch snack bar. So I went to the snack bar in my old neighborhood where I lived as a kid. When I came there at night, after the church service, drove to that city, was already deep in the night, I came there, the snack bar was still open, I ordered my favorite Dutch food, there was sitting another man. And that man looked at me and I said, I recognize you. You're Richard. We grown up together in this neighborhood. Do you remember me? I'm Hofer. And I looked at him and I remembered him. And then he said to me, I have been following you on Facebook and on Instagram. I know that you are a Christian, that you are a pastor, man of God. But I always knew that because in your house you served God. In your house you may not curse. In your house there was no music of the world. We didn't watch bad programs. There was everything less and was all the rules. But I loved to play in your house. And the, all the other kids loved to play in your house. Your house was the favorite house. Because there was something in your house that the other houses didn't have. There was peace. There was joy. There was something supernatural. But we never understood what it was. But we knew that in your house there was something special. Now I know it was God who lived in your house. Like God is in your life. And that's why you are a successful man today. You got kids. You got a wife. You got a life. You have prosperity. You are blessed. But I not. I have served this, the God of this world, I've served mom and money, and now I'm a devastated man, and I don't have nothing. And I want to have what you have, what you always had in your family. I want to serve the same God that you had. Do you want to pray for me? And I prayed for this man there in Delft, in the Netherlands, in that snack bar. Gover was my old friend when we were kids. So you understand, if we serve God, we will be blessed if we will attract the people to us. Just like King Solomon attracted the nations to him with King Seba of Ethiopia. Now the other way of the evangelize, what we see in the Old Testament, what Jesus is talking about, is Jonas. How is the way of evangelism of Jonas? Jonas is very easy. He's being sent out. He needs to go to the sinner where the sinner is. God says, leave your nation, Israel, and go to a faraway nation that is the nation of Assyria. Go to Nineveh and preach the gospel, even if they are your enemy. Jonas didn't want to go, not because Jonas is disobedient and lazy. Jonas didn't want to save the people of Israel, uh, Assyria, because the people of Assyria were the enemies of Israel who were killing his people. But God says we even need to love our enemies. We need to go out and preach the gospel to all the world, to everybody. Even those people that persecute us, who are our enemies, we need to forgive them and love them and save them with the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's why the gospel of Jesus Christ is the strongest weapon. All the weapons in this world are only for killing and destroying. 
But the weapon of the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ is the most powerful weapon because it doesn't kill our enemy. It makes our enemy become our friend, to become our brother, becomes our family because we forgive if we love them and they will become one of us. That's why even Paul, who became, uh, who was Saul, who became Paul, who was the greatest terrorist against the church of Jesus Christ, became the greatest preacher and missionary because the gospel of Jesus is not to destroy our enemies, but it's to save them. We love the people, we love the sinners, and we want to preach the gospel for, to them, for them to become one of us. So the weapon of our warfare is different. A weapon of our warfare is to save the people. That's why we don't fight against the flesh. Because human beings, we want to win them. We fight against the dark entities, the demons who are behind those people, those we bind and those we cast out to set the captives free. So Jonas was sending out to go to the other nations. So we see that in Yesiah chapter 6, verse 8, we see that very clearly that God always wants to send persons to go. God is looking from the book from Genesis to the book of Apocalypse, God is always searching who wants to go out to another place to preach the gospel there where the sinners are. So in Yesiah chapter 6 verse 8 is, here is written it. I also heard the voice of the Lord saying, Who shall I send to whom shall will go for us? Then said, I'm here. Am, uh, 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 then I said, here am I. Send me. So the prophet Yesiah said, send me. God is looking. God wants people to send out. Now, when we go out, we need to preach the gospel. We need to preach the Bible and only the Bible. And that's why Billy Graham, one of the greatest evangelists of all time and greatest preacher, always say, it is written in the Word of God. So when you're going to evangelize, always use the Word of God. Always proclaim the Word of God, saying it, it is written with power and authority. And our message must always be about Jesus. That's why Jesus himself in Matthew chapter 4, verse 17, who's the greatest preacher, the greatest evangelist, Jesus, always his message was this here. Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. From that time, Jesus became the priest and to say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus is saying, now is the time for, to repent. Because we are all sinners. We have separated ourselves from God by our disobedience, by rebelling against our Creator. So we all have sinned, and sin separates us from God, from God is holy and He is perfect. But God loves us. So Jesus came to die upon the cross for our sin. He died for us. And by dying for us, He took away our punishment. Because the punishment of our sin is dead. And Jesus died in our place. And because He died in our place, if we accept Jesus, He takes away the punishment. And that is mercy. God give us mercy that we don't receive the punishment what we earn to re receive by our sin. But he died in our place and he, for he forgive us because he has taken our place. The second thing is that now we must stop doing sin. Now we must live holy and follow Jesus. That's why Jesus is our Savior and also our Lord. At the moment when he becomes our Lord, we receive grace. And what is grace? That now we have not deserved to go to heaven. None of us have produced good deeds that we are allowed to go to heaven. But by the grace of God, Jesus gives that to us. He gave by His grace that we may become the children of God. If we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord. So if we accept Him as a Savior, we are forgiven for our sins. We have accepted Him as a Lord. We are saved to go to heaven. And that's all by faith, not by our works. Not what we have done, because how holy I might live, I will never be sufficient to pay the entrance to go to heaven. And I always will fail, and because I fail and do sin, I deserve to go to hell, but by the mercy of Jesus, I don't need to go, I am saved. So Jesus is our Lord and our Savior, and by this we receive grace and mercy. So everyone who accepts Jesus as his Lord and Savior is safe. That's why we need to say, repent for the kingdom of God is near. What does that mean? Any moment you may die, when you die, then it's the day of judgment. There's no escape. When you die, you only live once. And when you die, you will stand before your creator. But if you accept Jesus Christ, you're ready. 
Because the moment when you die, you're ready to meet your creator. But any moment, very soon, Jesus will come back. And when he comes back, then we need to be ready to meet him. Now, my friends, I want to tell you this. This testimony, what happened in my life. When I was living in the Netherlands a long time ago, I was a high school teacher. And in the last year of high school, you go with all these students who have finished their school. They may make a trip. And they choose to do radical sports in Belgium, in the mountains, in the forests of Ardana. So I went there as a teacher together with those students. And we were doing rappel, you know, climbing the mountain with rappel with that rope. And when I was there high in the mountain, the system broke. And instead of holding me, I started to fall down 30 meters. And I knew at that moment when the system were filled, I knew I was going to fall down on the rocks and I would be like a tomato that will splash on the rocks and I will die. And right at that moment that I knew I was going to die, time stopped, my friends. Time stopped. So everything was in slow motion. And my senses became super senses. I could hear everything. I could see everything. If I looked at the rock, it was like, uh, you know, microscope. I could see the sm smallest details. Everything enhanced. If I looked to the city, I saw everything enhanced. And I heard everything. It was supernatural. But right at that moment, just like in a movie, my life started to flash before me. My life started to flash before me. And I saw the whole history of my life from the beginning that I was born till the moment that I would die at that moment that I was living there at the mountain. And when I saw all my life, I only saw the good things. I saw nothing what I've done bad. Every time that I knew, all right, I've done that, that was good. Now comes something that I've done bad that didn't appear. The movie was like a 3D movie. I saw my whole life and only saw the things that I've done good. Then I realized God has forgiven me. He has taken away my sins. I'm purified by the blood of Jesus. I'm saved and I am worthy to go to heaven because now I'm a saint because everybody who received the grace and the mercy of God is a saint and a saint will go to heaven. So I knew, praise be the name of Jesus. I'm a saint. I was happy. I knew that I was going to heaven because Jesus has forgiven me. But just at the moment that I was going to hit the rock, just at that moment, the rope and the mechanism worked again. And I didn't die. But I was holding the rope all the time. It cut till my bone. I got even here the, the, the proof to show it in my hand. It was cut till my bone. Everybody was worried. Everybody was crying. The people were organizing. The other students, the teachers, they say, we thought you all were going to die. But you didn't die. It's a miracle. And I said, yeah. But the greatest miracle is, is that God would send me to heaven. I'm forgiven. And I was so happy. I didn't worry about my hands were cut. I was not angry at nobody. It was a joyful day because I say, God wanted me to go to heaven. But he still has an assignment for me to do. That's why I didn't die. That's why I'm here. But I want to tell to you, when you die, you will face judgment. Are you ready? I am ready. I know that I am ready. And you need to be ready. Now I will tell you a story of my father. My father was an alcoholist, but he became a Christian. And when he became a Christian, he changed his life. And he dedicated his life to God. But he died a couple years ago. But in his last day before he was going to die, when I was together with him, with my wife and my children, my father said this to me. And he said this to me, to my wife and to my children. He says, very soon my trumpet is going to blow. If I might trumpet blow, I will go to heaven, and I'm ready. I'm prepared. I'm going to heaven. God already said to me, very soon my trumpet will blow, and I will be in heaven. But very soon, the trumpet of the coming of the Lord, of the great day of the rapture of Jesus Christ, that he will take his church into heaven, that trumpet will sound. And when that trumpet sound, my father said, you, Richard, together with your wife and your three sons need to be ready because I want to meet you in heaven. You need to be ready because the coming of the Lord is soon. Soon will be the day of judgment. So my father, three days later, after this last conversation I had with him, he died and he went to heaven. Just like he had prophesied that he said his trumpet will be blown and he will go to the Lord. But I remembered very soon the trumpet of the coming of the Lord will blow. And we're singing the signs what is happening in the world, the signs of the time. Very soon, Jesus is coming back. Are you ready to meet your maker? That's why Jesus said, that was his message, repent, because the kingdom of God is near. 
any moment Jesus can come back. But if Jesus doesn't come back for the whole church and to judge the world, maybe your trumpet will blow and maybe you can die by an accident, by every problem that can happen, by sickness, by maybe something and disaster. Are you ready when you die to meet your maker? Today is the day to repent. Today is the day to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So pray together with me and ask forgiveness of your sins so that you may receive forgiveness and that you may receive the grace of God. Let's pray together. Our beloved Father who is in earth, I'm praying, a beloved Father who is in heaven, not on earth, he's in heaven and in earth, but our beloved Father who is in heaven, I'm praying here with every listener who's watching this TV program, that we may ask forgiveness of the sin. We are asking forgiveness. We are asking re and we are saying that we are repentant of our sins. Forgive us, O oh God. Forgive us of our sins. Wash us and cleanse us with your holy blood, the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed upon the blood for the remission of our sin so that we may be cleansed, that the punishment that was upon us, the salary of sin that is death to go to hell jesus paid it upon the cross for us by his blood and now we receive his mercy and now we don't want to live for ourselves anymore we want to live for you we want to serve jesus and obey your commandment not more be rebellious but to be your children so make us the people of your word that will obey your word and that will live holy for you lord jesus christ you you are Lord, and by this we become the children of God and we receive the grace of God that we may go to heaven. In the, I don't belong to this world anymore, but I belong to you, Jesus. So break every curse that the enemy has upon me. Break every addiction. Set me free in the mighty name of Jesus to the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now you are in child from God, and God is asking all of us, if we become children of God, to preach the gospel. You need to preach the gospel, my brother and sister. You need to say, repent for the kingdom of God is near. Tell the gospel to somebody else. Let God use you for his kingdom so that you, you can do mighty and great things for God. I'm Pastor Richard Severberger. God loves you. Ciao, ciao. Be blessed.